course I forgot to get the water stains off, but you can see in clear water that hasn't been stained with Indian almond leaf yet. These guys are quite stunning. So yeah, they're uh, really beautiful. Hope I can preserve that turquoise. Don't worry, that red wash is going to come out. If you notice, it's harder to tell on coppers, but she only has very slight red wash and red ventrals, so we'll see what happens. I almost put in male four, I gotta say, um, but this guy, I think this is going to be a step forward in the webbing reduction especially. And he's just so, so nice. I like this guy a lot for some reason. But yeah, lots of courting action. This is great. Yep, see, there he goes. So when you see a male do that, claiming um, territory and stuff, he's just under there. I'm sure he'll start to build a bubble nest tonight with the barometric um, pressure drop. They tend to become more active when it starts to rain. We're not sure why. Maybe because of the barometric drop. I always say that and that's what everyone says. And maybe that's what they're sensing or they're sensing something else. Who knows? But um, they tend there tends to be a lot more bubble nesting activity during those times. And we are supposed to get um, some flooding this weekend. So I thought this was definitely the perfect time to do it. So hopefully... He starts working on a nest. I tend to put pairs together at night, let them see each other for maybe 20, 30 minutes, do this dance. She is flaring, but notice that it's not overly aggressive and her body is at a slight tilt down. And when he's away from the container, she's trying to come to him. Those are really, really good signs. If she is overly aggressive, like, biting through the thing and all that kind of stuff, then maybe you might have a problem. Or if she's completely shy and she's terrified and every time he comes by the jar, she, um, she hides as far away from him as she can, then you might have a problem. But this behavior is kind of what you want to see. You want to see the male flirting and then returning to some kind of nest site and then you want to see the female doing this um, this very interested kind of flaring her body horizontal or her head slightly below horizontal and really wanting to follow him and you can see she's um, well I just fed them white worms before I put them in here I like to give them a good meal before I put them in the spawn tank because they might not be eating for two or three days. I don't feed while they're spawning. I do feed while the male is raising the fry. He doesn't always eat. But um, yeah, I feed them really well with white worms before I put them in here for about a week. And uh, you can see she's nice and plump and she has that white ovipositor um, behind her, uh, her little bust. <laughs> but she looks great. There, um, I got some decent pictures for photography, but yeah, hopefully we see something soon. Forgot to say that another trick you can do to jumpstart the male's nest building is to literally steal nests from other males in jars. So I stole nests from two of the males that were bubble nesting in here, and I just used a spoon. I should have videotaped it, but I forgot. So I literally just used a spoon. I went underneath the water level, just went yoink, took the net, took the nest, and then I just put it there next to the leaf that he was already claiming. And you can see they have no shame. They're just gonna take whatever nest they find and so he's already started um, building on it and improving it. So look at that guy. He's a good looking betta, isn't he? 
but anyway. So he's already started improving upon it. So let's see, he'll occasionally flare at her. <laughs> I gotta say, this is when bettas are at their most beautiful, when they're about to spawn, is when they are so gorgeous. And this won't focus for some reason. But yeah, this is when they really glow. But oh, let's see, so he's back there. <laughs> he didn't do a lick of work. And he just, yep, shameless. He's like, check this out, lady. I built this all by myself. <laughs> Lies. Yep, see, look at that stinker. He's already adding bubbles. I put those nests in like literally two minutes ago. <laughs> right before I started filming. So a lot of people will say you can use a piece of um, bubble wrap. Um, that works. I think it is similar. It simulates the light reflecting off the bubbles on the surface of the water maybe. But I mean if you have a bunch of bettas um, and they're happy, at least one of those males is going to be bubble nesting. So why not just take that and have a natural bubble nest? And all you got to do is use a spoon and um, place it after you've observed the male flaring a little bit. So might as well. And I have also been watching these guys it's just mesmerizing. These guys are just so gorgeous when they're getting ready to spawn. They are just beautiful. So, anyway, I think this is one of my favorite moments in beta breeding, other than, of course, when they're actually doing the spawning embrace, but you gotta be lucky and be home when they do that. That's why I always try and spawn on the weekends. I'm gonna keep our fingers crossed for this pair. <laughs> Little stinker. Okay, so it's the next day. Well, 11 a.m. the next day, because I sleep in on Saturdays. And, um, it's not looking as promising today, I gotta say. So usually the flaring does calm down. Because they've been flaring at each other for, you know, hours now. Except when they're sleeping. Ideally, the female looks gravid. So it looks like she has quite a few eggs, so she looks ready. She's not as interested in the male. And what worries me is although the male is going back to his nest, if you look closely, okay, so maybe he's working on trying to add some stuff, but you can see there's not a ton of bubbles under there. He moved the nest under the leaf, but it's kind of a crappy looking nest, so we'll see what it looks like. Sometimes first time that they spawn, males don't know what to do. Uh, they're kind of bad fathers the first time around sometimes, and then they improve. Other males never get it. So I am hoping that this guy builds a better nest when I release her. So I'm gonna wait just a couple more hours, give him a little more daylight, and then um, I'll think about releasing her later today. Okay, so it's nighttime. The male still has a pretty terrible looking nest, but I'm gonna let her go anyway. You can see that I covered the sides of the tank so that hopefully they will be more focused on one another. And let's see how this goes. I'm just going to 
wait until he's not actually interacting with her. And then I'm going to pull that out. The reason why I like to use these bottles is that um, the top and bottom are open. So when I pull it out, it's not um, disruptive of the water. So as soon as they stop sparring, I'm going to remove that. So we'll see. My friends have been telling me all day that some of their fish have been successful without a bubble, a good bubble nest. So we'll see what happens. So there they go. Just she's like, what? What do I do now? And there he is. Here come the fireworks. I'm actually gonna take pictures for documentation. Oh nope, too late. got some good pictures. So anyway, this is the nipping stage. Um, male's gonna chase her quite a bit. I have more hiding spots than I normally have, so we'll see how this works out. So he'll chase her, and again, he'll keep going back to his nest, which really is not the nicest looking nest, so we'll see what happens. So it's the next day, and you can see that my um, fears were totally unfounded. Although his nest wasn't great to begin with. Oh wow, there we go. We got just a bunch of eggs out there. Um, they're spawning right now. It's rained a lot at night. It's raining now, actually. It's a really big storm going on. But anyway, what you see is the eggs falling from her ovipositor. The male is going to go around and pick them all up, collect them. Unfortunately, it looks like some of the eggs are getting lost behind that heater. So hopefully the male will go down there and pick them up too. The female, after the embrace, embrace kind of goes into this slight comatose state. It's very strange. And then she'll come out of it and start picking up the eggs too. Some people think that she's eating them. But most of the females I've bred are just collecting them, see, and then she's going to put them into the nest as well when she has a chance. So, sometimes she has to hold on to them for a while. And there, there's another embrace. Release of the sperm and the eggs in close proximity to one another. And then the male... We'll collect any eggs that fall. Some embraces have more eggs than others. Some embraces will have more fertile eggs than others. It's all about practice, but I think these two are doing really well. So we'll see what happens later. Kind of funny that right next door, we also have better rubra spawning. But to be honest, better rubra spawn all the time, so this isn't a new thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got two species of bettas spawning in the fish room today. So these guys, in comparison to show bettas, um, are mouth brooders. So they do the embrace as well. I don't know why they think they can fit under there, but um, they do the same kind of spawning embrace. But instead of putting it in a bubble nest, you can see that the male is holding them in his mouth. Similar to like an arowana um, or those other large mouth brooding species. So there they go. They're going to somehow fit. There we go. In a little embrace. Okay. Just this cute little ball. They spawn on the ground. Whereas betta spawn up near the surface, wherever their bubble nest is. Some bubble nest underneath. Betta splendens, the show bettas spawn on the surface of the water. There we go. They embraced. Not sure if there were any eggs in that one. But the male picks them up. 
and mouth breeds them. Sometimes the female picks them up and then they trade eggs. But yeah, two different kinds. And the female, here's she also does the weird comatose twitching thing as uh, the other guys do. It's very strange. Okay, so I just took the female out <clears throat> because the male started to chase her away. So you can see he has a nice clutch of eggs. And uh, we'll see how many of them are fertile. Oftentimes, the first time that pairs spawn, you know, they're not very experienced, and so not all of the eggs are going to be fertile. Some of the embraces might have been too loose, or they weren't lined up properly, um, and so the eggs didn't get fertilized. And so there are both fertile and infertile eggs in there. Well, we're going to cross our fingers as that most of them are fertile, and that the male continues to do this good parenting behavior, um, which is keeping a nice nest so that the eggs aren't on the bottom. That'll be difficult later when we see them falling because they start to wiggle around, but um, hopefully he starts, or he continues to show this really nice parenting behavior. Over time, he might eat some of the eggs if they are infertile. He will eat infertile eggs so that they don't uh, infect, they don't get contaminated and infect the rest of the clutch. So don't be worried if you see him eating some of the eggs. If you see him eating all of the eggs, then most likely they weren't fertile to begin with and you're going to need to spawn them again anyway. But kind of hold your breath and see what happens. One other thing I forgot to mention <clears throat> is that um, I don't want him to be distracted at all. He's come out and flared at me a couple of times, so that means, you know, he swam the full length of the tank to tell me to get out. <laughs> so I'm going to, in addition to the cards on this side and this side, I'm going to put these cards back up so that he feels very secure and that, you know, there are no predators that are going to get to him. So now he's in there all by himself. Night time and the male is holding strong. You can see he's gathered them all in one corner. Males always, different males have different ways of doing it but I'm really pleased with how stuck the eggs are. They're definitely not falling. And he's uh, constantly mouthing them, cleaning them, moving around. He really hates me looking in the tank, so I'll keep this short. This is the behavior you wanna see. He's doing well. Adding bubbles, good boy. So, crossing fingers, they make it through the night. Man, I love watching this. They're so paternal. Alright guys, so looks like we have a lot less eggs. But that's okay. I don't like raising tons of fry. So again, probably this is not because he's an egg eater, but because a lot of the eggs were probably unfertilized. It's first time spawning. Um, a lot of the times when they get better at it, they uh, get better fry, or uh, more eggs are fertile. So, sorry, my camera's, there we go. So anyway, he's still doing good parenting behavior. And um, again, I'm not worried. As long as we get some fry here, that's fine. And if I really need more, then I can just spawn them again and they'll be far more experienced the second time around. Okay, it's very difficult to see, and I'm shining two lights at it even, but you might be able to see if you like really squint at the video, tiny hair-like projections out of the nest. There's not a lot of them. It doesn't seem like a lot of the eggs were ended up being fertile, 
but tiny little white hair-like projections out of the nest. Those are, um, that's hairy nest syndrome. Those are the fry that have hatched but are still not able to swim and take care of themselves. Oh, there's one that fell. He's gonna pick it up in a second. My camera keeps trying to readjust, but that floating one is a fry that, oh, looks like it made it back into the nest by itself. So anyway, male is doing a fantastic job keeping all the fry in there. Oh, there's another one that's moving around. Um, doing a great job keeping them in there. All right, guys, this is what it's all about. These tiny, tiny fry just became free swimming today. And uh, yeah, this is what it was all about. I'm not sure how many I got. I'm thinking about 20. Dad over here is very upset that I'm taking pictures of his fry. <laughs> He's a very good daddy. So you can see, kind of see the size difference there between the adult that uh, and the, and the um, newly hatched fry, but they just became free swimming about three days after spawning. And uh, he's just about done with all of his daddy duties and is ready to go back into his own jar. But he did an awesome, awesome job. All right, this is the last uh, little clip for this series. There's a tiny fry here at the top middle. It's kind of hard to see because my phone is having trouble focusing on him. But I just put in a new handful of duckweed from one of my other tanks and put it in here. And he's hunting for all of the little microorganisms that are in the duckweed. And so I usually, for the first week, a lot of the fry are too small to actually eat baby brine shrimp. And so I feed them some paramecium from my cultures. And I also periodically put in new um, plants from other established tanks that are filled with these little microorganisms for them to eat. So you can see he's happily eating tiny, tiny things that are smaller than BBS right now. And there are way more fry than I thought there were. Um, I think there's like 30, which I am totally happy with raising. I don't think I'll spawn this pair again. So overall, this was a very successful spawn. So uh, that concludes the beta spawning series. See you guys later.